obesity. How novel drugs enable body weight control. Matthias Thür, Helmholtz Zentrum, Munich. On November 9th, 1989, I was a student of medicine at Ludwig Maximilians University, Munich, and had just started working in a hormone research laboratory when the news emerged. Good afternoon, everybody, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here right after your lunch to talk to you about overeating. <laughs> but no panic, because there, there is some good news. As a matter of fact, when you are still daring to look at the news today, there's some good news that say the end of obesity. Now we have breakthrough drugs that allow you to normalize your body weight with one injection per week. Now I'll try to share with you that story over the next 14 minutes before the mime pushes me off stage. Um, and that story starts 100 years ago. 100 years ago, something amazing happened, another breakthrough. Insulin was discovered. And insulin changed a deadly disease, diabetes, into a manageable disease. Leonard Thompson here, this, this kid, was the first insulin patient, and, and it saved his life, and it saved the lives of millions and millions of people ever since. So you would think, with the power of biomedical research, if something like that was achieved 100 years ago, 100 more years of research, we should have taken care of the problem of diabetes. Well, that's not the case. Numbers are going up and up. More than half a billion diabetes patients around the world we are not able to control that problem. Diabetes is going up and it's taken over. Now, this was already the situation when I was in 1989 in November, a medical student in the lab, working on understanding hormones and asking myself, well, isn't there anything we can do to stop this, to reverse that pandemic, get rid of it, prevent it? And the prevention angle was what I thought was the most promising, because there is another pandemic in slow motion, obesity. And that one drives the diabetes pandemic. I mean, the mechanisms aren't exactly clear, but everybody in the field would agree, if there wasn't an obesity pandemic, there would almost be no type 2 diabetes, which is most of what diabetes is today. And on top of that, obesity, based on what we are thinking, is a disease that kills millions of people every year. Now, there's always somebody in the room, actually several people normally, that ask me then, well, you know, obesity, isn't this just about, you know, self-discipline, eating less, more exercise? This is already what Hippocrates said a couple of thousand years ago. Well, no. It's a genetic disease. A polygenic disease that in our hypercaloric environment has been becoming more and more of a problem. Now, um, there are still some in the room probably that say, well, genetics, schmenetics, whatever. I know what to do. It's all about education. We need to tell people what they should eat and what they should not eat. Healthy foods. We all know about this. We know what to eat. So I apologize because we did a little experiment with you. Over lunch, there was dessert. And that dessert may seem familiar. It looks good. It smells good. One of the desserts was sour and healthy, this one. And then the other one was called Snickers chocolate nougat something. Obviously high sugar, high fat. Of course, none of you would eat that ever. But we have some mathematicians up there that just did a little analysis. It turns out. The snicker ball was more than half of you, or half of us. Of course, anonymity is, is granted. We didn't take any photos. We did take photos of two individuals <laughs> that seemed to have been repeatedly eating the snicker ball. <laughs> Lots of education needed there. But back to the story, so now, now the nerdy stuff. We said it needs to be possible to find a drug that allows us to overcome these genetics and regulate body weight, normalize it, lose 20, 30% of body weight. 
not by calling a surgeon and doing a gastric bypass, by giving a drug. It has to be possible. So 30 years ago, um, I started to look for a partner and teamed up with Richard DeMarkey, fantastic peptide chemist, because when you're a physician and you want to make drugs, you need, you need a chemist. So together we had a strategy, we said, okay, apparently there's many signals that are influencing body weight control, we need to have multi-receptor drugs, you know, activate several signals at the same time. It's a brain disease, it's not a fat cell disease, we need to target the brain, but we got to do it safely, so we need to use Mother Nature's toolkit and use the gut-brain signals that are actually designed to talk about food intake to, to the brain. So then we looked at several candidates and glucagon was the first one we got really interested in. And everybody in the field says, and you may say when you have been opening a textbook of medicine, glucagon, that's the wrong hormone. It makes glucose go up. We want glucose to go down. But we said, well, there is something else. When you look through all their studies, and we have done some of our own experiments, glucagon can also melt away the fat. It can help you burn calories. And if we then find something else that can help us keep sugar down, maybe have something new. So we looked at the whole family of peptides, glucagon-like peptides, GIP, glucagon. We said, well, what if we create a super hormone out of two or three of these? That seemed to be possible based on, on the, the peptide chemistry, so a dual agonist became the vision. And then just four or five years later of hard work, that it was successful. So we were able to um, test this in mice. These are mice that have been sort of on a McDonald's-like diet, um, or a Burger King, over a couple of months. And we made them lose 20, 30% of the weight in four weeks by injecting one of these single molecule dual agonists. This was the breakthrough discovery of the first multi-receptor drugs for obesity. But we wanted more, and we said, well, uh, first of all, does this work in humans? Now we know there are several versions of this by pharmaceutical industry. This is a Beringer Ingelheim version that shows, well, these drugs in phase two clinical trials, they can make human, humans lose 18, 90% of their body weight. But what if we use another member of the family? How about a GIP, GLP coagonist? Let's use these other two. These are two drugs that are known to trigger insulin secretion. They're known to do something in the brain to decrease satiety. Actually, it was known about GLP. It wasn't known about GIP. This was sort of where, again, we went against the mainstream and said, let's activate it. Everybody else wanted to block it. So dual agonist was made for GIP, GLP, and uh, with that, we actually could show really impressive weight loss, dose dependently. Again, in mice, preclinically, it was published, and then pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical industry all over it, making versions of this. One of these versions today, you may know, it's called tirsepatite or Munjaro, Ilelili, was approved last year for type 2 diabetes, and actually was approved yesterday for obesity. It's a horrible name, I think, Sepbound. I don't even know how to pronounce that. Um, but what this drug does is it can reduce body weight by 22, 23% on average in human obesity. Now, that is a breakthrough that 30 years ago when we started, nobody thought was possible. Back then, there was nothing there. You could call a surgeon or say what Hippocrates said and said, you know, get yourself together, discipline, exercise, less food. So now we knew, well, that something is possible. Maybe we can normalize body weight in obesity, like blood pressure can be normalized in hypertension. So knowing that this was the best drug out there, this will be best in class in obesity treatments, we said, well, you can do it with these two and with these two. How about tr three? How about a triple GIP, GLP, glucagon, receptor, coagonist in a single molecule? Now that was easier said than done. It took us seven years going from the chemistry lab to the physiology lab, from the cell to the mouse, uh, trying to find the right balance, making sure the molecule we were making wasn't necessarily something that our body would recognize and then reject with our immune system. Um, so it sort of felt like a Rubik's Cube, only it's not just a switch of a cube, it's a couple of months of work making the molecules and testing them and testing them and going back. So it's cumbersome, it took a long time, but in the end, Richards and, and, and our lab in collaboration succeeded. This is how these molecules look. Actually, this is more how it looks. 
but uh, in matter of, of explaining this, you look at the amino acids. Every amino acid is, is examined. Do we want this to be from that hormone or this hormone? Do we have to do a couple of things that albumin can bind, that proteases don't cut it apart? And with, with that game in the end, we had a triagonist where we could decrease body weight by 30%. Now, when you look at the purple curve, that is what Munjaro set bound is today. But the, the, the pink curve is what a triagonist can do, twice as good. So again, that was published, and it takes a couple of years for that to be picked up by the pharmaceutical industry, go into clinical trials. And these are the phase two trials that came out this year of these triple agonists, or triple G, how they're called. 24% weight loss in 48 weeks. And it turns out this works even better in severe obesity. So it's not a good lifestyle drug. It's actually a good drug, because the worse the disease is, the better this works. 26% and the expectations are this can be 28, 30% of weight loss, like a gastric bypass, by just injecting once a week with a pen. Now, the triple receptor agonist, based on our knowledge today, will be, will be the future. That will be the best drug out there. It normalizes also, by the way, blood sugar. It, it, it decreases uh, blood pressure. And there is a number of these versions in clinical trials with different pharmaceutical companies around the world. So the breakthrough message to take home and feel less guilty about joining uh, Jürgen and myself with the dessert, the discovery of multi-receptor drugs breaks through the wall of obesity, and it may be able to prevent, reverse the diabetes pandemic. Now, in the end, before the mime comes, a, a few thoughts on food, food for thought for what that could mean. So first of all, it will save lives if pharmaceutical industry makes this affordable and insurance will cover it, hopefully. Uh, then lives will be saved. But also, it will hopefully prevent type 2 diabetes from existing the way we know it today as a pandemic. Well, if that happens, what does that mean for the insulin industry? Do we need all that insulin? Well, it turns out two of the major companies making insulin are Novo Nordisk and Lilly, so it sort of balances itself out. Um, then what does that do to the food industry, those who are catering specifically to overnutrition? Well, you can go online and find that somebody's getting nervous. They're talking already about financial consequences and who is the biggest loser when the weight loss drugs work and the food industry doesn't have to make all these candy bars anymore. And with that, I thank you for your attention and everybody in the lab takes a village that has been working on these tests. Thanks so very much.